Hey there, my name's Drew Brashler, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get your X Live card set up with your X32 or M32 to do a virtual sound check and multi track recording. If you're brand new to my channel, I am all about making you feel more confident in your production gear no matter where you're starting from. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now, Behringer released the X Live card a few years ago, and it is a fantastic expansion card for the X32 and M32. It allows you to do two things. One, it allows you to multi track record 32 channels to an SD card built into the actual card, and it can also output those same 32 channels to a computer plugged in using the USB connection on that expansion card. And it can do this at the same time to both places. Now it can also play back from either of those two places, 32 channels back into the soundboard. But in this video, I actually wanna show you how to get it set up for you to do a virtual sound check with your band. Now, virtual sound checks are gonna be really beneficial for you if you're at a church or a venue and you have a rehearsal with the band on stage. You can press record, and then once the band is all done and the room is empty, you can press play on your expansion card, and then you can play all the audio back into your console so that you can do a virtual sound check, which means that you can solo up any of the instruments as if they were on the stage playing at that point in time. So you can solo up just your lead vocal or just the bass guitar to tweak the settings that you have on your channels for those instruments. Now, one thing to mention about the X Live card before we dive in is that you do need to have a specific SD or SDHC class 10 SD card. So this is the one that I use. It's a SanDisk Stream Pro, and I will actually link this in the description below to the specific one that I use. But it does need to be a class 10 card so that you can record and play back with no latency and dropout issues. So let's go ahead and get the routing set up on this. Go ahead and hit routing, and then I want you to tab over to input. What you need to do is you need to copy what settings you have here into your expansion card tab over here. So if you have your inputs coming from your local or your AES-50B, or if you're using your user ins, you need to copy that onto your expansion card. So we'll notice that I have all my channels coming from AES-50B 1 through 32. So tab over to card, and then we need to copy it to this page. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to AES50B one through 32. Once you have that set, page back over to the input tab. And we want to rotate our sixth rotary knob to the right where it says play and then we want to press it. So we need to set this to be coming from card one through 32. So we can see that this is currently set card one through 32. Now the benefit of setting this ahead of time and being able to toggle between record and playback is that the X Live card automatically can switch between your stage inputs and your card inputs when you start your playback. So anything that you have selected when this is on record means that if your card is recording or not recording, these are gonna be your stage inputs that are coming into the console. When we start playing back on the card, it will automatically swap over to your playback inputs, meaning that when you press play on the X Live card, it'll automatically swap over to these. So now that we have that set, let's jump over to our setup and then tab over to card. You'll notice that we can see our X Live card and I have a couple sessions here that are already recorded. We'll notice that there's a second page on this. So go ahead and go down to your second layer and there's a few things that we need to set here. We can select between our two SD card slots. I only have one SD card in this right now so we can see that it's selected on SD card one. Our SD recording is set to 32 channels, which is what I want to have. I want to have all 32 channels being recorded to the card. Channel routing is our next selection, and this is what I was talking about with the playback versus record on the routing tab, and I have this set to automatic. Now, this means that when you press play on the X Live card, it will swap those inputs for you. The next thing that we have is our playback config. You can choose to playback audio back into the X32 either using the SD card or the USB connection that's on the back of the expansion card. Like I said, this has two things, the SD card and the USB connection. So we can record 32 channels 
to both the SD card and the laptop simultaneously, but we can only play back from one of them at a time. The next thing that we have is our USB interface setup, and this is currently at 32 in, 32 out. Once we have all of those things set up, go ahead and layer up one, and then we can actually just hit record. So my band is already playing, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit record, and it's going to instantly start a new session. And we can see that we have a record time, as well as our time remaining on the card right here. So as the band is playing up on stage, you can feel free to mix however you want to, as this is not going to impede what's actually being recorded. The recording that's actually going to this card is directly from the input. So the only thing that will change any of the audio going to this card is going to be your preamp settings. Now this is beneficial because any of your settings that you have set on your console will not affect the recording which makes it beneficial for us because when we play back, it's also going to play back right at the preamp, which means that all of the settings that you had on your channels won't be changed with the audio, which means that the original audio from the preamp is recorded and then put back at the preamp when we play back, which means that you can tweak any of your settings that you want as if the band was up on stage live at that time. So once your band is finished, you can go ahead and hit stop so once you stop the recording, we will notice that we have all of our sessions here that we have recorded onto this SD card. We can see our most recent session uh, that was recorded today that we just did during this video here. So if I'm wanting to play this audio back into the console, all I have to do is select the session and then press play. And now this audio is playing back into the preamps and now I can go and start mixing this however I want to. Now, as you're tweaking things, any of the settings that you tweak other than the preamp will be saved for when you swap back to the stage inputs. If you find that you needed to adjust the preamp setting on any of your channels, you will need to write that down on a piece of paper next to you and apply that to when you swap back to the stage inputs. For instance, if my bass was 3 dB too quiet for the entire recording and I wanted to make it so that it was louder and I adjust the preamp here, this is actually just adjusting the trim of the playback of the card. It's not actually going to apply it to the gain on your stage inputs. So write down that you need to change that up by 3 dB. And once you press stop, your console will swap back to being from the stage inputs. Now you can go select your bass guitar and apply that gain boost of 3 dB that you needed to. Utilizing this multi-track recording is gonna be very beneficial for you if you're brand new to EQ, dynamics, gates, any of those things you can set using headphones or through the PA without having the band up on stage and without having any audience in the room. The really nice thing is you can just press play on a section that you want to listen to over and over and over again as you tweak your settings on say that vocal or that bass guitar or whatever instrument that you need to adjust. So use this as a learning tool for you to get better at mixing on the X32. Once you're done and you find that you don't need that recording session anymore, what we can do is we can press utility and we can go find that session and we can actually delete that session. So we can see that I have this 910 selected and I'm going to delete it because I no longer need this rehearsal because that was in the past. So once I do, I can press confirm and that has deleted that session. As long as you have permission from your artist that you're mixing, I always recommend recording any shows or rehearsals so that you can always go back and practice that audio. But you do need to make sure that you have permission from the artist first for legal reasons. But thank you so much for watching this video. If you are brand new to my channel, I'm always looking through those comment sections to find the next thing that's gonna be beneficial for you. For instance, this video is being recorded in response to a couple videos ago, uh, someone asked for a recording on how to do a virtual sound check with the X Live card. So I made this video off of that. So if you happen to have any questions, feel free to post them in the comment section below as I'm always looking through those to find the next helpful 
video for you. Also, check out my website at drewbrashler.com, and I actually have a brand new thing called memberships on my channel, and this is a way for you to give back to me for making all of these videos for free for you. This is a project that I've had for a very long time, and I love making these videos available for free for you to be able to learn. If you want to help support me, check out the memberships and see if that might be a great fit for you as it really helps me with making all of these videos. So thank you so much for watching.